Welcome to the Hockey Writers Union Junction, a weekly show from our Columbus Blue Jackets insider, Mark Scheib, bringing you the latest news, rumors, trades, player grades, game results, and much more. From training camp to the playoffs, from draft day to the trade deadline, he covers everything that happens with the Jackets. So get ready. It's time for another get together at Union Junction. All right, Nick, we're recording this to give every, all the fans a little bit of a behind the curtain here. It's 7 12 at night on July 13th, on opening night of opening day of free agency. And the Columbus Blue Jackets apparently just broke Twitter. According to <laughs> Elliot Friedman, he was the one that originally had it first. He said that Gaudreau is going to Columbus, he said, in the neighborhood of seven times $9.8 million. In your wildest imagination, did you ever foresee a situation where we'd ever be talking about Johnny Gaudreau wearing a Columbus Blue Jackets uniform? I wrote a piece about the perfect world situations for the Blue Jackets and free agency. And Johnny Gaudreau even seemed out of the possibility that in a perfect world, he would come to Columbus. So honestly... I don't even know how we're going to get through the show because like my brain is just not computing that this is real. And the fact that it's been confirmed by other multiple sources too, not that Elliot Friedman needs confirmed, but the fact that it's out there, obviously so, so, so much, it changes everything. It literally changes everything because no one saw this coming like this. I guess we need to try to start at the beginning, right? So he was, Gaudreau was the biggest free agent piece out there. Obviously the best player available coming off a hundred point season. How do you, how can we even compute how the blue jackets found a way to get this done? No. And this is like, it completely changes everything that we had foreseen for the blue jackets over the next few years. You know, it, this guy, he makes them, he makes them a playoff contender, I think, instantly. Oh, it's an instant change, yes. Because now you like think this about, pushes them ahead so far. You wonder who's going to be the center iceman, but that's kind of a different discussion for a different. I mean, they got good centers, right? Cole Sillinger, up and coming, Boone Jenner, Jack Roslovic. Those are the ones well, on the roster remember, now. All that Paul Korea and Timu Solani needed was Steve Ruchin up the middle. There so, I mean, Boone Jenner is a guy who could probably, you know, do well enough. Now, here's this, too, from Pierre Lebrun. Like, we're literally going live in a sense, even though this is pre-recorded. Can mm. also confirm that Calgary's last offer was eight times 10.5. And Gaudreau left that on the table to come to, to the United States, to the east, and to, to Columbus. So he took seven... And apparently between 9.5, 9.8, whatever the final number is. I've got a theory, and I want to know what you think of this. Okay. Gaudreau from South Jersey, so in the Philadelphia area. The Flyers admitted that they weren't going after Gaudreau probably because of the cap. Is it possible that Gaudreau pivoted to plan B when the flyer situation didn't work out. Yeah. And are we okay with the blue jackets being plan B? I would assume so. We'll probably Close never, enough. we'll probably never know the full truth, but no. it, it, I think it's no secret that Gaudreau loves being near home. And if there was an opportunity there, and I think it's pretty reasonable to guess that, that's a, a good possibility for him. And now we got to talk about cap situation. So after the, we're going to talk about Gabranson too, but the Gabranson signing was four times four. That left them with about 12.8, 12.9. And, and Gaudreau's coming in 9.5, 9.8. That leaves around three point something million left with Patrick Line needing a new contract. If you were the general manager of the Columbus Blue Jackets, Nick, what would you do? Uh, 
five. Well, yeah, you got to look at one of those guys whose spots that he's taking in the top six, right? I don't, I don't think Voracek is going to move. Um, he's, he's got too big of a contract, but it does come down to those two guys that we've kind of pointed at as uh, kind of X factors that could move is Gus Nyquist and Oliver Bjorkstrand in my mind. Mm. The other thing that this does complicate and this is kind of, we can talk about this later, but Vladislav Gavrikov has an extension coming up. He's at 2.8 right now. You've got to, you got to assume that he'll make, you know, somewhere around four. So that's another thing that uh, this complicates down the line, but they made a heck of a swing here today. If the season were to start tomorrow, who are your top four wingers? Uh, well, there's Goudreau, Line A. Vorchek, Vorchek, oh, yeah, Vorchek for sure. And I don't know; it's either Gus or Bjorkstrand. Not Ken Johnson, not Kuro Marchenko. Not yet, not yet. They're they're five and six for me. But what do you think? One of Gus and or Bjorkstrand becomes outside the top six, and you're paying them top six money. Like Gus is five point five mil. Bjorkstrand's 5.4 mil. I'll tell you what, Bjorkstrand would fetch a lot more in a trade because there's term, there's cost certainty, and there's people that believe that he hasn't hit his upside yet. It, I mean, if you're going from Bjorkstrand to Gaudreau, no offense to Bjorkstrand, Gaudreau is, a, is an upgrade. Mm-hmm. One of the best players in the NHL. But Bjorkstrand's a really good player too, so... There, there's a couple of different ways that they could obviously go, but we know that something has would, would obviously have to happen here. But you want to talk about a jolt. You want to talk about the overall jolt of the franchise here. What's been the prevailing story with the Blue Jackets over the years that none of their stars would stay or not, or no one would come to Columbus to play. Can we finally put that the rest that started with Wierenski and some others? Can we finally put that the rest that, the best player on the market said yes to Columbus. Do you think this kind of undoes like kind of a one for one evens out Panarin? I think to a small degree, it starts the process. Yeah. I mean, Panarin had some great times here. So I think that. Well, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how he does in his first year, but. Yeah. But wow. I mean, we're. We're, we're recording this and we're still in shock of just how this whole thing came about. It, it felt weird just because the, he didn't sign right away. Mm. And then the, the, the news started to slowly come down. And then in one false swoop, a big bomb comes down. The cannonball, the cannon goes off. And Johnny Gaudreau is a member of the Columbus Blue Jackets. For under $10 million. For reportedly under $10 million. And you know yeah, what? Reportedly. They had to do that. They had to do something given the Metropolitan Division. That's the other thing I want to talk about with you, Nick, is some of the other trades that happened within the Metro. Carolina got players for free from Vegas. The Washington Capitals got their gold, they got a Stanley Cup winning goaltender now. Um, the Pittsburgh Penguins got the band back together and they're no slouches. Um, if you're going to compete in the Metropolitan Division, you have to have elite talent. So in that sense, the Columbus Blue Jackets did wonderful to bring the most elite talent to them. But I feel like they had to respond to the way the division is going. Did you see it that way too? Uh, Yeah, but also never in a million years that I think Johnny Goudreau would be the guy. Yep. Just yeah. crazy. And especially since the number we were seeing uh, reported before the actual signing was like 12 million for seven years. I don't know if you saw that too, but it was like, oh, okay, well, that's a little unrealistic for, you know, an actual mm-hmm. number. But if it is what's being reported, and by the time the listener gets to this, they'll actually know if it is 9.8 or around there. That's what a steal. It's probably left around $15 million on the table to come to Columbus. And it's only, 
it's a puddle jumper from Columbus to Philadelphia or to go over toward home. He's right there and he's in the States too. You've got to think that family and geography had a lot to do with this decision. Mm-hmm. And a team on the rise as well. I mean, let's not forget. The Columbus yeah. Blue Jackets might be young, but after the last couple of drafts, Kent Johnson, Marshenko, we've already talked about them. And then those that are already here, um, and then they added on defense as well. It's a, it's a place that players now all of a sudden want to go to. And the one underrated aspect to Columbus is just how great of a city it actually is. Like, if you haven't been there, people don't realize how much of a hidden gem it is. To be able to raise a family, to be able to be kind of in a quiet media market, I I think that that's advantageous as well. So when you actually look at all the different factors that go into it, it's a big win for for Gaudreau. It might be one of the biggest wins in Columbus Blue Jackets history. Has there ever been a, let's have that question. Has there been a bigger moment in Columbus Blue Jackets history in terms of this kind of assigning anything along those lines? Yeah, I I was just going to say, yeah, I think this could be the biggest moment in team history since Rick Nash was drafted. Now we have to wait for, we have to wait for the impact, but. I'm glad you brought up Rick Nash. How much of an impact do you think he had on this? It's got to be good to see that players want to come back after they've left Columbus. Yeah. No, I mean, and and also to be able to recruit as well. Oh, yeah. Well, we've heard that before, that Rick Nash was a huge selling point to a lot of people. I love getting the call from Rick. And that's the thing. His role in this, I wonder could have had a huge role to say, you know, Gaudreau may have had questions about Columbus and you have somebody like Rick Nash who can say, got it pretty good here. And he dealt with it when it was the hardest. Oh yeah. Probably. And look at it now, look where they've grown. Yeah. So, so, so much more to talk about with Gaudreau. We could go for an hour here, but little bit of a limited show this week but we're going to try and get to some of the other points so let's talk about the one before that Gaudreau thing happened and that was Eric Gabranson so you want to talk about the happiness of Gaudreau I think most fans were caught off guard at the contract in the term of Eric Gabranson four years four million per when you first saw that Nick what was your reaction uh I thought it's the right guy it's a guy that fits the mold that they're looking for a little rich for my blood. Mm-hmm. You know, if he comes in at, you know, three, 3.5, that's even a little bit easier to stomach. Four is tough. Cause then you're, tr- you're trending into the same amount of money that someone in the top four would play. And it's not a given that Eric good Branson is a top four defenseman. That's the thing. He had a pretty good year in Calgary this year, but The question is, is he going to be that guy or is he going to be the guy that, you know, the Florida Panthers traded away, the Vancouver Canucks traded away because he just wasn't doing it. But the other thing is he's got he's got some pedigree. At one point, he was a very, very, very highly sought after guy, went third overall in his draft year. So I don't know. We'll we'll have to see which Eric Branson shows up in in Columbus to really get the, the full picture of how this contract looks. We had a good year in Calgary last year and Kekalainen called him their biggest free agent target early on, obviously before all the good dress stuff happened because of he's a high character guy, obviously a big guy, six, four, six, five adds an he's element. He's literally their team. biggest. Oh yeah. <laughs> literally like makes me look small and I'm six, three and a half, six, four. So. Oh geez. It's a big boy, but something that, they, they need when you have kind of a lighter defense, you need someone to be able to protect them. And I know that the analytics crowd is not happy with this, but Kekalainen was asked about that and said, sometimes, you know, you can't account for some of the intangibles in analytics, which I, I tend to agree with. Like, I think analytics certainly has its place. It certainly tells the story. 
I just don't think that it tells the whole story. And if you go 100% to analytics, I think you miss it. But then if you go 100% the other way, you miss it. I think a nice blend of everything. So it's the stuff that you're not going to see on the score sheet. Now, you're not going to intimidate the Columbus Blue Jackets anymore. He's going to make sure of that. And I think that's a big thing for a young team and a growing team as well. You need to have that presence back there. And yeah, he had, they, had, they had to pay market price. He, I get the sense that Gabranson could have gotten something similar in other places. So if they wanted this guy, they're going to have to pay up, even if it feels like a little bit of an overpay. So that's what the market dictates. It's an unrestricted free agent. He's earned the right. So he could have picked anywhere he wanted. So he needed a right offer to be able to go. So in that sense, they had to do that. We knew that they were going to look for a D, probably a right shot, big guy D. They got him. So in that sense, they got what they were looking for. Time will tell on the contract. Is there risk? 100%. But there's risk with all free agents. I mean, you, you imagine how it'll work out, but until it actually plays out, you don't know. But do we at least understand what their intended goal was? Very much so. Yeah, he, he's 30 years old, so he'll be the oldest <laughs> defenseman on the Blue Jackets, which is saying something on its own. He's got 11 years of NHL experience, so he does bring a lot that is needed on that back end. And if he does take on a bit of a, you know, a leadership role in terms of helping the younger guys get used to the daily grind of the NHL, uh -huh. then that could be worth some extra cap hit, you know? Very much so. And sometimes you got to pay to get something that you really want. So in that sense, I think it's an okay gamble, at least for now. Obviously that could change over time here. Of course. So we talked about good Branson. We talked about Gaudreau. We sort of touched on kind of the future that stuff is going to have to happen. Like if they resign line, a, we think that a move or two might be coming. Could they possibly have anything else in store in free agency after something like this? Could you foresee a scenario that they maybe track down a center or another center to join this crew? I don't know. I don't think so. I think they got to figure out what they've already got at this yep. point mm -hmm. and then go from there. Yeah. The, the, the name that came across my mind, like Dylan Strom. Mm. Could you, you know, you wrote a piece on Dylan Strom, actually. I did, yes. Thanks for reading. At least somebody read it. Now Absolutely. I know. Hey, if one person you at read, least read the go. headline. You I at did. least did the headline. It made me click. <laughs> so, it until Kekalainen says he's done, he's not done. He actually said today, we're by no means done. Mm. Who would have known that this is what he meant? That is going to be Johnny Gaudreau. It, it, it's, it's one of the most shocking hockey stories in recent memory. Honestly, yeah. And, and we're not understating that. It, it, it's shocking. It, it's, it's a whoa baby moment for everybody. Imagine how the devils of the Islanders must be feeling right now. When's the last time the Columbus Blue Jackets stole a player from, you know, one of the New York teams, right? When's the last time that a small market has won over a big market? You know, it's, it's just, it's so rare that I think you really got to emphasize how unbelievable it is. Absolutely. What a win for the Jackets. Yeah, and there's just so much more to come to. You know, we're going to be wrapping up the show here in a couple of minutes. Um, and obviously, much more could come out of this after the fact. By the time that you do get to watch this, you know, we're reacting in real time while we're recording, but you're watching this on Thursday the 14th or later. But yeah, it's if you're a fan of the Columbus Blue Jackets, you've waited over 20 years to have something to gravitate to, to have something to be able to celebrate, because at every turn, there's been players that have left, there's been players that have said no to Columbus. There's been vast underperformance. There's been lots of dark days, lots of misery. But today is a new day. Today is a new day in which they landed the big fish. One that is a game changer. It changes, like you said earlier, it changes the whole outlook. 
So if you're out celebrating or you celebrated on Wednesday night, good for you. Probably a lot of emotion yeah. in that. Almost like when they swept Tampa Bay, the emotion that you had when the sweep was completed. It's almost like that here. Totally get it. And then to see what else could happen from this. Gaudreau and Line A together, that's just nasty. That's just absolutely <laughs> nasty if you think about that. People are going to tune into the Columbus Blue Jackets because of how fun they're going to be. Yeah. So if, you, if you've been a Blue Jacket fan your whole life, today is your day. You've waited your whole life for this. So we're happy for and you. Patrick Line is kind of labeled as the goal scorer, but like Goudreau just scored 40. Uh, so yeah. he's an elite goal scorer in his own right. Absolutely. Whoa. Just, yeah, our, yeah. our brains aren't really working very well today. Because, well, yeah, this is like too soon after. We're in the aftershock still. We're in the aftershock phase still. But we're actually going to wrap the show up here. Um, but actually have a little bit of an announcement for you all. And um, it's actually um, kind of the end of a chapter here. To, um, our show here, Union Junction, you know, we've been on um, pretty consistently for the last several weeks. This is actually the last show that is going to, you're going to see on YouTube. Um, you know, the, the end of the season is coming up here, you know, going into the summer, but um, this actually is going to be the last Union Junction on YouTube. Now, we're going to talk about possibly continuing it in an audio format. We're not 100% sure yet. Discussions are going on, but this episode here is the last one that myself and Nick that you're going to see on YouTube, but it's not the end of us where you're still going to see us writing. You're still going to see us all over the hockey writers covering the Columbus blue jackets. Just, you will not see this show anymore. That's okay though. The hockey writers are really doing something pretty special here. They're building up you know, the podcast network and they're also building up. There's a few shows that I highly recommend that you watch and that are going to continue to be on YouTube. You're looking at the prospect corner. You're looking at the um, Red Wings grind line. And I think there might be one or two other shows that could be continuing on here, but I would highly encourage you to watch those shows when they come out. Um, they do a fabulous job keeping up with, you know, with the prospects, you know, keeping up with the Red Wings, things like that. Real good opportunity there. I highly recommend that you check them out, but I just wanted to take the time here and Nick as well just to say thank you for always tuning us in to spend a little bit of your time with us talking about the blue jackets and those that have taken time to give us questions and stuff like that. We are forever grateful. The reason that we're here is because of you. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all of the times that you've consistently tuned in to us. So we're not going anywhere. We're going to be out on social media. We're going to be covering this team. And we might be back next season, depending on if we do some, that decide to do something on the audio side. And we'll, we'll definitely announce that if, once a decision has been made. But this is it for us. So, Nick, um, you know, thank you for being an amazing co-host, a great writer, and a great friend as well. And just, yeah, this is going to be it for us. You're making me cry, Mark. I know. I'm so sad. Oh, my but- gosh but the hockey writers has such a bright future and the things that you're, you all are going to see eventually is going to be totally, totally worth it. So Nick, I'm Mark, you know, that thank you again for everything that you've done. Um, obviously a lot more to come with Gaudreau and other things like that. So stick with us, but thank you for joining us in union junction for the last time. So until we speak again, Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Enjoy the hockey. Have a great summer. And goodbye for now.